Professor Hassan is uh, currently Professor of Intensive Chemistry with Michael Kwadi. His field of specialization includes medical chemistry, organic synthesis, and pharmacy informatics. He completed his PhD in 1990 from the University of Hyderabad in applied theoretical chemistry. He has a total of 36 years of research experience, which includes 4 years in USA and Germany, and 30 years of teaching experience. Apart from his current position, he has held various positions such as Dean Michael during 2016 to 2018. He is the recipient of various awards and recognitions such as Fellowship of Indian Academy of Sciences, OPPI Scientist Award in Medicine Chemistry, Transactional Research Award in Pharmaceutical Sciences, Chemical uh, Research Society of India Middle, Fellowship of Rocket Society of Chemistry, London, Ideal Faculty Award in 2007, and Fellowship of Alexander Hum, uh, Von Humboldt System Born in 2007. He has uh, supervised till now 34 PhD students, 168 master students, and 16 research students. He has published uh, more than 300 scientific articles, and he has introduced the concept of nitrium with novel chemical bonding character, that is free and coordination bond, and established that such compounds exhibit anti-diabetic, anti-malarial, and anti leukemia activity. So now, now I invite uh, Sir to uh, deliver this talk. We have heard two students speaking, and uh, now uh, Sir will be delivering this topic. Please, very brief introduction. Over to you. Okay. Uh, uh, I don't remember how to share in this platform. Uh, so on top of file, edit and then share. File, edit and share. share, share. Top share. Top share. share. So uh, you can share the file. Share my desktop. So share. <laughs> Can you see my email? Yes. Uh, now we can see the slide. Sir. Okay, I am opening a different file. Yes. Sir. Can you uh, tell me how many participants are there actually? At present, 124 participants are there. Actually, some of the participants are mailed at uh, they are uh, not able to log in because of uh, some technical difficulties because of the webex. So right now there are 125 parts. Okay. So they are uh, all from across the country. Yes, sir. Not not from not from bits alone. No, no, no. Bits uh, bits people only are facing problem with login. Uh, except few who could join. Others are not ready. So we are. Uh, um, showing it in some room, where the people are sitting on the Anyway, my position is not very important. Uh, I should be able to show my presentation. Okay. Yeah, we can see. Can you now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So, uh, actually, I can switch off my video. 
Okay, my topic is uh, about thinking in three dimensions. This is one of the very first things uh, in uh, computer design. However, oh, I want all the drug discovery people, whether they are computer aided or not, maybe pharmacologist, maybe a pharmaceutics person, maybe a toxicology person, maybe an organic chemist, maybe a natural product extraction chemist. I wish all of them should start this particular practice because we have been thinking in one dimension for many years. We, for many people, paracetamol is only a name. They take one white powder, take in on the, on the wrong, on a flask or maybe in a, in a bottle, something is there, paracetamol is written, some white powder is there. Other than that, they don't think about it. They don't know what is uh, what is inside. They don't even look at the 2D structure. They don't even bother about the 1D structure of the molecule. That means the smile notation no, is not required. The in-cheek is not required. Then the homology, uh, what is that? The various varieties of 1D, they don't uh, really pay attention. They don't even pay attention to the 2D structure. Many people in pharma field don't remember the 2D structure of the molecules which they are routinely referring. But these two are already very poorly understood. Now I am asking you people, all, all of us to understand it in three dimensions. Because the drugs are three dimensional objects. They are not two-dimensional, they are not one-dimensional, they are not just spellings, they are drugs. In reality, they have 3D structure, they have a shape, they have a size, they have a volume, they have a surface. There are several properties which are associated with that. That is reality. What we are seeing in two dimensions is only a representation. If I remember the two-dimensional information of a, of a drug molecule, maybe paracetamol, maybe bedaquilin, maybe remdesivir, maybe a, a amlopidine, or any of these drugs which we are currently interested in for the development, these are all uh, having 3D structures. If we look at only 2D structure, or if we look at only 1D structure, and or if we pay attention only to their spelling, we are not doing the right left jet discovery. I want all the people in pharmaceutical sciences, as well as whoever is participating in drug discovery, should pay attention to the 3D structure because it is possible today. Once upon a time, when you were a teacher or a student, this 3D structure visualization was not practical. Today it is practical. There are several software available, several online software are available, several free software, several uh, commercial software, everything is available. They are, uh, they are helping us to visualize the molecule in three dimensions. If we do not adopt it today, that means we are living 30 years or 40 years back. Do we want to live 30 years back in science and do research today? Is that what we want to, is that what we call as progress? Certainly not. If we want to do today's research, we have to adopt the 3D thinking. If we think in two dimensions, as in organic chemistry textbooks, or if we think in uh, one dimension, uh, as in the, um, almost all the biology research papers, it is wrong. Every drug discovery scientist should think in three dimensions. This is essential for future success. If you remember this, if you are thinking in two dimensions or one dimension today, you are deciding that I will remain a third grade scientist in pharmaceutical field in the coming few years. Today I am 20 year old or 22 year old person. I want to work another 40 years. 
If I don't develop the 3D thinking, that means I am going to remain in a third grade ranking. I will not be competitive. I will be outsmarted by many people who do indeed think in three dimensions. So with this particular introduction, I would like to start my lecture. Ask all of you to read this paper. This is a paper published by an expert in medicinal chemistry in General Medicinal Chemistry 2018 and it is a very excellent article. So what is he talking about? What is the title of his lecture? The uh, title of his article? The title is What Makes a Great Medicinal Chemist? He has listed five topics and five subtopics and many few, many subtopics in each of these five. About say uh, 20, 20 tricks of the trade he has uh, told us. One of the important text that he suggested is to think in three dimensions. Okay? So I want, I'm not just telling uh, based on own, my own experience only. I'm telling on the basis of the experience of great medicinal chemists who are successful today. They all think in three dimensions. If you want to become a successful drug discovery scientist, you have got to think in three dimensions. And there are facilities available since yesterday, we have listened to many lectures. Each of these uh, speaker uh, utilizes the 3D uh, technology. He has uh, utilized this 3D thinking um, as a part and parcel of their everyday work. Not, not once in a day. Every day, every minute, they have utilized it in three dimensions. I want to give emphasis to this topic because many people in pharmaceutical field are happy to think in one dimension or two dimensions. They are not adopting this particular facility that has been created. The facility created starting in 1993. 93 onwards molecular modeling topic has started taking shape. It has matured into a topic called pharmacoinformatics in 2003. By 2013, both molecular modeling, pharmacoinformatics, in silico drug design, then uh, again all uh, structure-based drug design, ligand-based drug design, all of them become standard topics. But stay, there are still improvements. Though they have become standard, there are improvements. Improvements are required in molecular docking. Improvements are required in molecular dynamics. TSA topic has matured already into a very well and reliable technology. Virtual screening is a very, very reliable technology. Whereas all of them, all of the technologies which are very well developed are those technologies which have got a future growth potential. All of them are having a background, in the background, with 3D thinking. Uh, that means I wish all the medicinal chemists, all the natural product scientists, all the pharmaceutical people should adopt this if they want to become successful in drug discovery. Now, why do we need 3D thinking? Because drugs are 3D objects, they are not 2D objects. Micromolecules are 3D objects. The interaction between the drug and the macromolecules are happening in three dimensions, not in two dimensions. If we see any any publication in German Journal of Medicine, you can see showing a 2D figure. It is only a representation of the 3D figure. It is only to highlight the 3D view. You should have that ability to think in three dimensions from the given 2D figure. If not, you can you can download the free software and you can perform the uh, exercise that's uh, done by the same scientist who reported the research article and then adopt what he has done and then start thinking in three dimensions. This is very essential. The dynamical process 
that is molecular which we may understand using molecular dynamics or we understand using induced research or macromolecular perturbation theory or activation aggregation theory or two stage theory or whatever theory we are using whether it is theory or experiment it is always in three dimensions you are compound in your round bottom glass in a solvent it is in three dimensions it is not two dimensions so we have got to develop if we want to, to become successful in this field we have to compete with nature we are we have been since the day humans started thinking about 1.5 million years ago we are always competing with nature today we have computer aided tools to do the same job let us do it in because nature is in three dimensions the chemical reactions responsible for secondary machine gas generation they are all in 3d the uh, the uh, receptor agonist binding or receptor anti antagonist binding or partial agonist binding or enzyme substrate binding or enzyme inhibitor binding or dna enzyme binding or dna drug binding or antibodies everything every thing that you consider or 3d objects we should not forget that the drug transportation process is 3d for example metformin and cationic uh, species organic cation transporter is allowing the passage of metformin cationic form of metformin through its um, uh, various uh, pathways it is happening in three dimensions it is not one dimension okay so we have got to think all are happening in three dimensions pharmacoinformatics provides an opportunity for the 3d perception and that's what we have learned over the last two years all the speakers have utilized the 3d structures and they have explained the interactions very well and they have mentioned the beauty i am going to emphasize a little more on the very fundamental topic of thinking in three dimensions because some of the computer aided drug people also are not aware of these details and what i am going to tell look at this drug molecule we all know what is it all of you may be able to guess say okay. i hope at least 20% of you should be knowing what it is it is a structure of isomerization it is 2d structure the story structure i am going to compare it with the 3d structure look at the 3d structure of isomerization and 2d structure of isomerization what is the difference what do you know from here you can see that this particular amide bond is not completely planar there is pyrimidylization at this nitrogen center there is pyrimidylization at the second nitrogen center also there is excellent arrangement between the two o and h bonds how do we know all these details we know all these details because we start thinking in 3d isomerization is one d information the structure on the right left hand side is 2d information the structure on the left hand side is a 3d information when isomerization is producing its therapeutic action by forming a complex isomerization is a pro drug it interacts with another a small molecule in the body and then it produces a slightly larger molecule that larger molecule inhibits an enzyme called cat g and the process is that inhibits the process is responsible for the um, mtb anti anti microbial activity shown by this particular compound so if we don't know the 3d if we will be not knowing the pyrimidylization of the two nitrogen centers apart from 3d there is additional property called surface property every drug has got a surface property a surface is understandable only if you know what is 3d first of all it has got a solvent accessible property it can interact with the solvent only in 3d it interacts with the macromolecule only in 3d 
it, it gets metabolized in greedy. It shows it with toxicity in greedy. So we have got to think as it is in the right hand side of the now how to represent in greedy. What is it? What is the structure I just showed you in the previous slide? What is this? I have formed a representation. This representation is not what computers are using. This representation is only a visual representation. To make it clear to the chemist, to make it clear to the drug discovery scientist that there is a molecule which has got bonds, which has got aromaticity, which has got um, uh, the atoms are present in, in a three-dimensional arrangement, spatial arrangement like this, it is only a representation. What is reality? Reality of this representation, background information behind this is Cartesian coordinates. Every atom shown here has got their definition in the form of Cartesian coordinates. I am showing in the next slide the Cartesian coordinates of all the atoms present in the isomerizide molecule. There are several carbon atoms, there are a couple of nitrogens, there is one oxygen, there are several hydrogen atoms. All of them, each of them has got Cartesian coordinates. What you see on computer screen is because of the mathematical manipulation. How do we do the mathematical manipulation based on this particular Cartesian coordinate system? So every drug has got Cartesian coordinates behind it. Every macromolecule has got Cartesian coordinates behind it. If you are looking at the 3D structure of a macromolecule in on your computer screen that is downloaded from Protein Data Bank, you look at the original file of Protein Data Bank. It will become immediately clear to you that the coordinates of each and every atom is present. And then during the molecular docking exercise, the very first step they prescribe is that to remove water molecules. What do we mean by that? There are several water molecules means there are several oxygen atoms inside the protein data bank. The 3D structure defined by the particular protein data bank entry in that 3D structural file, there are coordinates associated with so many water molecules. That means not water molecules, only oxygen. And we have to remove all those oxygen. That is what is being described. But when we say add hydrogens before doing molecular docking, what we are doing? The coordinates of the hydrogens are not available in the protein data bank structure. That is why we have to add. If we don't add, it will not be a protein. It is nothing but a simple uh, coordinate system. It is physically correct, not wrong, it is chemically wrong, it is biochemically wrong. Until and unless you add these hydrogen atoms. Why? The crystal gravity did not report the hydrogen atoms in VDB VDB5. So we have to add. Who is helping you to add? In the hybridization process. That each and every atom has to be estimated and then the software is adding. But then by adding the hydrogen, the software may make small, small uh, uh, errors. They are not actually errors, they are approximations. Approximate values they add, we have to optimize them to get to the right structure. That means we need to optimize the 3D structure. So, we let us realize that any 3D structure, any 2D structure that we see on a computer software using either ChemDraw or um, Glide or Schrodinger or whatever software we may use, when we look at the 2D structure, it is looking impressive maybe, but when we convert into 2D, 3D structure, it is not very, very appropriate. To make it appropriate, we have to perform some small homework. Before that, let us remind, let us understand what is 2D to 3D conversion software. There is a software which is helping us in converting 2D to 3D. I am 100% sure that most of the software are making errors in this conversion. 
you have to pay attention you are a human being you are intelligent software is dull dumb uh, useless meaningless that helpful software will help you in taking the right decisions but software you should not trust 100% you have to look at the tiny structure of all the molecules with your own eyes maybe the 2d to 3d converter has done couple of errors we don't want these couple of errors to be a part of our drug discovery process that is why we have to understand it in 3d then there are those 3d structures are only physically correct not chemically correct because they are physically correct i need to perform the geometry optimization and i need to perform the energy minimization on the 3d structure which is physically correct 3d structure i have to perform geometry optimization and energy minimization to to make it 3d to make it chemically acceptable and then it has to be it has to be electronically acceptable because every drug or every chemical compound is electronic species a bond is a pair of electrons a lone pair is a lone pair is a pair of electrons a, a, an oxygen carbonyl bond is having two um, four electrons between these two oxygen has got four electrons surrounding it nitrogen has got one lone pair so these are all uh, electronic in nature so we want to understand the electronic character of the molecule we have to look into the molecule to understand how to look into the molecule i need the 3d coordinate system if i don't have this information i will not be able to successfully do the computer aided drug design one more thing is that if i don't know how to represent in this cartesian coordinate system i can use positional coordinate system i can use polar coordinate system i can use crystal coordinate system there are many varieties of coordinate systems apart from this i can use the internal coordinate system i am going to show the internal coordinate system in the next slide this is the internal coordinate system of a few elements of isoniazide what is the first column which is talking about the label its second column is talking about where it is connected third column is talking about bond length fifth is talking about how the angle is connected now the angle is given here next column is about the torsional angle describing element and then last column is the torsional angle value this is the 3d representation of isoniazide so the background behind your software the most fundamental topic behind your software is cartesian coordinate if you cannot understand cartesian coordinate very well you can use the internal coordinate system these two are the backbone of all the software whatever software you are using without this it is not practical at all computer aided drug discovery now molecular modeling the entire molecular modeling topic is a 3d activity it is possible qsr is also 3d activity then artificial intelligence is also 3d activity then talking dynamics are any a 3d activity we know it very well virtual screening is 3d activity what not everything is a 3d in computer aided drug design if you cultivate this habit you will understand cadd very well whether you are a medicinal chemist doing synthesis whether you are a medicinal chemist doing natural product whatever it may be you should look at the 3d structure of what you are doing it is as fundamental as having a 3d look at the objects of your interest suppose you are going to buy a tv you want to buy a 65 inch tv by panasonic for example do you want to spend that 1.6 lakh on that huge tv without going to the market and looking at it even once simply order on amazon and spend 1.65 lakh no so you have to see it in 3d you have to see its performance in 3d in your spending your money before buying a bike for example all of you are engineers 
you are interested in bikes, you want to, okay, or you are sufficiently young, you may be getting married within the coming five years. Are you going to get married to a person just by looking at the photograph? Then how you are happy by doing drug, to do drug discovery without looking at the 3D structure? How much time does it take to look at the 3D structure? It will not take more than one minute. If you go to the nearest computer center and look at online 3D structure, it will take one minute. It will, if you have your own software, if you have your own facility, you can do 3D structure generation, energy minimization, transformation analysis, and then doing docking and dynamics. That will that may take the whole thing, but looking at the 3D structure and having a uh, rotate it, zoom it, and represent it in various models, either CPK model or white frame model or the balanced stick model or simple stick model or the dot plot model or the it's a surface. Whole thing will take only one minute. Can you spend one minute on a drug molecular 3D structure on which you are going to work or carry out your project? I have seen some people in the pharmaceutical department, um, they work on a compound, tamoxifen. They work on that compound, he tried to prepare the um, formulation. He prepared for 10 different formulations. He got for over five years of tamoxifen. Okay? He said that I am successful, I have published um, 20 research papers, I have got so much. A simple question, did you look at the structure of tamoxifen in three dimensions? The answer is no. So why did he waste five years of his life without looking at the 3D structure once, even once? which takes only one minute. He could not spend one minute out of his five years of research. And he is almost married to Tanakshivan for five years. And he did not know what is the 3D structure of it. So such a waste of life of a research scholar. Okay? So, if it is this computer software is helping you, within one minute, we look at the 3D structure. If you are doing research without doing it, that means you have decided to remain as a third grade, useless, um, failure-oriented pharmaceutical scientist. Okay? I am telling in very, very clear terms. Okay, this topic are in central to CADD. Estimating the properties of chemical species can be done easily using molecular modeling. Atomic level details of the chemicals and biochemicals can be obtained easily using the 3D representation. The hydrogen bonds, the van der Waals contacts, um, the ionic interactions, bonding patterns, all of them can be understood only with the help of 3D structures. Several misconcepts available in the um, 3D, above, available about the molecules can be removed. He, today we had a lecture by Pankaj Daga. He is focusing on correctness errors in the databases, errors in the representations, errors in the literature about the structures of the molecules and their representation. Yesterday, uh, David Dacked uh, gave a lecture on uh, the um, topic of tautomerism and then uh, all the databases are missing lots of details because the tautomeric representations are not present in the databases. As a result, lots of information is being lost. Um, and then, so that means chemoinformatic scientists, pharmacoinformatic scientists, bioinformatic scientists, embedded drug discovery scientists, they are missing many things. I'm going to tell one example of how do we miss, how we are missing. The next slide I'm going to show the example called metformin. All of us know what is metformin. But we are big losers on metformin, I tell you. I will show you that. All the forces responsible for drug lightness can be estimated using molecular modeling. Molecular modeling offers many advantages and this information is complementary to the information coming from experimental efforts. That I don't have to tell. Look at the structure of metformin. You open 
Oliver Williams textbook. Met forming structure is wrongly written. It is wrong. This particular fact was given by Niper student, Mr. The, Mr. Dillon Patel. He told that OA Williams book is wrong about the structure of metformin. Okay? Entire medicinal chemistry till the year 2005 represented the two structure of metformin wrongly because they did not look at it in three dimensions. In the year 2005, a Niper student corrected the structure and he showed that in the neutral form, the metformin structure should be written like this with the intramolecular hydrogen bond, with the conjugation here, and in this particular tautomeric form. If you do not use this tautomeric form, that means you are giving a wrong message to all of the discoveries like this about the structure of the metformin. This particular correction was made by a, a student of master's second year at that time only because he looked at the 3D structure of the molecule. He is, today he is a very senior scientist, but most of the speakers today, they know him. The speakers, many speakers of this conference yesterday and today, they are friends of Mr. Dillon Patel and they have, um, they realize the work that is done by him. And now, metformin, neutral metformin is not a drug. Neutral metformin is actually a prodrug. Neutral metformin captures a proton and only after capturing a proton, it is a drug. And uh, every scientist who works on protein on metformin, they thought that proteination of the metformin happens at nitrogen number four. This was what they thought for the last 60 years. Since the day, the metformin was first identified till the year 2009. In the year 2009, the same scientist, Mr. Dillon Patel, told us protonated metformin is not after protonation at N4, but it is at a protonation at N6, after performing the computer-aided 3D arrangement, he showed that this is the resonance structure of the compound and he identified a new chemical bonding environment that is carbon-nitrogen coordination bond and based on that he created new class of chemical compounds called nitrions. And nitrions always carry carbon nitrogen coordination bond, two long pairs at the nitrogen center, positive charge and the entire molecule. And these are the details. These details are giving two polymorphic forms of this particular compound, polymorph A and polymorph B. That means the work done by this particular scientist is helpful for a, a computer drug discovery scientist, it is helpful for medicinal chemists, it is helpful for the uh, biochemist who is looking at the interaction between metformin and macromolecule, it is useful for the pharmaceutical scientist who is looking at the polymorphism of the drug. So one 3D structural representation and a publication in Journal of Medicinal Chemistry has given so much huge view of the well-known, very, very well-known molecule. I, if you know, I'm sure that you know, uh, at least one quintal of metformin is sold every day in Hyderabad alone. Hyderabad is the capital of diabetes and Hyderabad is the capital of metformin. One quintal every day in the form of tablets. So it is such an important molecule and its structure was wrongly understood because nobody bothered about it in 3D structure for 60 years. Okay, now in rational drug design, temporary drug design, molecular environment, structure based, light and base, computational chemistry, whatever name you give, 3D structure is very important. Uh, look at the technologies associated with 3D activity. QSAR is a 3D activity. 3D QSAR is available. Today most people are not doing 2D QSAR. If you are doing 
But uh, 3D PSR is the reality. One has to have a 3D vision of the molecule and a 3D vision of the environment, 3D vision of the uh, uh, box, uh, imaginary box in which we have to place it and then superimpose mini structures one hour the other, and then we will perform the 3D QSCR. For that, the 3D representation is required. Once the docking is anyway 3D, it is a 3D problem. It is a 3 n minus 6 plus 3 plus 3. 3 n minus 6 vibrational motions, 3 translational motions, and 3 vibrational motions. All of them have to be paid attention inside the cavity of the micromolecule. That is why molecular dynamic docking is a 3D problem by definition. Molecular dynamics without the starting point coming from the molecular docking, you cannot do dynamics also. It is the, the science which involves the uh, which involves the Newton's loss of motion on every atom in the given macromolecule and the drug complex. That means it is a 3D technology. It is not a it is a science also. It is technology as well as science. Molecular docking is more of a technology. TSR is more of a technology. Whereas uh, molecular dynamics is more of a science and uh, less of a technology as of today. Virtual screening is a technology which can be done with the help of uh, QSCR. No, with the help of um, docking or QSCR or modeling dynamics or uh, what is the lipping steel rules or uh, any of the uh, empirical rules. It is dependent on 3D. Quantum medical chemistry helps in, helps you in looking into the molecule. Every molecule has got something inside. It does not reveal all the time. Outside structure is different. Inside structure is different. Inside structure means what is in the mind. It is almost like I know uh, I know the uh, what uh, you are uh, coordinated today. I know uh, Professor Tamant Jada very well. He is a very great scientist. He is doing lots of research. He is doing excellent teaching. I know all those things. But I don't know his bank balance. How much bank balance he has? He never told me. Even if I asked him, he may not tell me. Why? It is internal. Internal details only relevant for himself. How? What I will do with his bank balance? I cannot steal it. Maybe if he gives me all the details online, I may try, but uh, if he is internal to him, exactly like that, there are several secrets inside every drug molecule. It will not tell us until unless we probe. To prove that, we have the topic called quantum medicinal chemistry. It, has, it is based on Schrodinger wave equation. We have to solve the Schrodinger wave equation on the drug molecules, then we can know the internal structure, that is the electronic structure of the molecule. To find the electronic structure, you have to think in three dimensions. Without that, you cannot. Do you know what is that? It is three-dimensional because it is an extension of your molecular docking only. Chemoinformatics is three-dimensional. There are several 3D databases in which there are errors that was already pointed out in uh, today's lecture as well as yesterday's lecture by many of the um, speakers. Bioinformatics, structural bioinformatics is all 3D. Sequence informatics is 2D, 1D, no doubt. Uh, it may be 2D if you consider the secondary structure, but you, you will not be happy with only that much. You have to think about the tertiary structure, you have to think about the quaternary structure of the micromolecule. For example, PDE4 is a dodecamer. Dodecamer means 12 of PDE4 molecules are always found together. These 12 monomers are always found as dodecamer, that means 12 units compulsory. That is all structural bioinformatics, that is all three-dimensional. 
artificial intelligence is also based on 3D because so many of the descriptors that we calculate, so many of the parameters that are required as inputs uh, for, uh, for artificial intelligence are all based on 3D structures. Now, this is what we do in our institute. We look at the 3D structure in the very first place and then we carry out structure based on design, pharmacophore mapping. Pharmacophore mapping is also three dimensional. The TSAR, molecular dynamics, quantum chemical calculations, and all the computer drug design technology. And then we design molecules and then we take to the organic laboratory, we synthesize the species, and then at the end we take the help of a biologist to perform in vitro characterization. If we are happy, then only we go to the involvo friends and then we go to patents and all other things. Now, look at the surface. This is the surface of every molecule. Every drug has got a surface property. Every macromolecule has got a surface property. If you want to know the surfaces, we should look at the 3D structure first. And 3D, over and above 3D structure, it is a, um, uh, it is a surface property. And inside the 3D structure, it is the electronic property. So we need to know 3D structure to look into the molecule to look at the surface of the molecule. Both ways how we need the 3D structure. Now look at the advantage here. This is what is the paper I am referring to. In the year 2005, Mr. Dillon Patel published the first paper showing that the cyclogumonel and the can be written like this. Both of them are looking somewhat similar to each other, but the, one of the important features is missing, that is the pharmacophoric feature. But if we write the 2D structure like this, if we rewrite the structure in the appropriate tautomeric state, how did he know that this is the appropriate structure? He had taken the 3D structure of the compound and he had taken the energy minimization and he performed the confirmation analysis. After that he came to know that the structure given below is the appropriate structure of the prothomonel and then when he compared cyclocomonel and prothomonel are looking exactly very similar to each other. Whereas prothomonel in 2D structure is the wrong representation is not giving sufficient pharmacophoric features. So as a result, when he showed this particular relation, immediately the paper was accepted in general medical chemistry. Just by doing only the quantum medicinal chemistry, without doing biology, without doing any synthesis, this paper was published in the general medicinal chemistry by a second year master student because he simply looked at the 3D structure of the molecule. That's all. Nothing more. No, no trick. He looked at the 3D structure of the molecule. Progonel. He got the Journal of Medicine Chemistry paper. Okay. Now, this 3D structure in the cationic state provides additional details that is also uh, published in this particular journal, Chem Chemical Communications 2009-1064. I wish you to read this paper and then look at this. When you look at, when you understand the 3D structure, you will know its dynamics. For example, metformin is a rigid molecule. Metformin hydrochloride is a flexible molecule. It is very, very flexible. It is dancing all the time. It is dancing, jumping, and it is excited, it is happy, it is singing songs. Whereas metformin is dull, dumb, and uh, useless. The difference between metformin and metformin hydrochloride, very, very small difference. But metformin hydrochloride is highly dynamical, metformin is very dull. Okay, so how do you know these details? If you know the 3D structure, you will know that. That's it. Now it has got internal electronic details, lone phase are located, one is in P type of orbital, one is in the um, SP2 type of orbital, all those details can be obtained and one can do. 
Once you do that, you can design many molecules. If you know that beauty, you can design compounds which are similar to gubernate cellulurea and show that these, uh, these compounds are having a character similar to that of nitriones and based on that you can design several gubernate cellulurea. That's what exactly we did and then perform molecular docking inside the cavity of plasmodium falciparum dihydrofolate reductase and then we know there are two lone pairs at this nitrogen and these two lone pairs of electrons. These are electrons. I'm not even talking about total atom. I'm not talking about the nitrogen atom. I'm talking about the electrons on the nitrogen atom. These electrons are preventing the transfer, transfer of hydride ion from the NADPH to the uh, substrate. These are two lone pairs of gubernial thyroidia. Uh, are two lone pairs of electrons. I mean, electronic level information we are able to give uh, how it is preventing the transfer of um, its minus. That means preventing the utilization of the NADPH. That means uh, inhibiting the PFDHFR activity. That means it is inhibiting the cell wall synthesis of the parasite. And that means it is killing the uh, killing the uh, parasite and it means it is eating the uh, malaria. What is eating? Electrons. The two lone pairs of electrons. How do you know? By looking at the TV structure. Simple TV structure of the PMD HMR, TV structure of the gubernial area. You compare these two, you will come to know that hydride ion transfer is clearly prevented by the enzyme at that particular nitrogen which has got two lone pairs. That is the beauty that is the nitrion. Based on that, we have synthesized many, many compounds, and based on that, we have been we are able to find many antihistaminal compounds, anti-malarial compounds, anti-diabetic compounds, and we have several patents coming up, and several publications have come up. Almost 50 papers are published simply from the idea originally generated by this scientist called Mr. Dillon Patel. Now today he is doctor, and he is a very leading scientist in USA. Okay, so you can realize that uh, a small work in the laboratory by paying detail, attention to the details, he is able to, to help us uh, in NIPER published 50 papers based on one single concept. This is uh, where variety of three superposition of the 3D structures is one thing we can do. Also dynamics will give results and it will give you the energies in terms of the delta G binding. For example, this particular slide is showing that here, uh, this particular, um, you can see here, um, in the case of EFDHFR, wild type or uh, quadruple mutant type or double mutant type, the binding ability of the drug is very high, whereas the binding ability is very low in the case of the human DHFR. That means the compound that is generated is uh, going to affect only the EFDHFR in all varieties of formats and it does not influence, influence the human DHFR. That means it can be safely administered to the human. That is the details one can come out of the theory structure of the enzyme versus the um, uh, enzyme versus the drug. Now again we can know which particular compound, which particular amino acid is giving greater stability, which particular amino acid is giving uh, is responsible for the difference between human and BFDHFR. Look at this here. At this particular point, if you can see that the human DHFR is showing destabilizing effects and uh, DHFR, PMDHFR is showing strongly stabilizing effect with reference to our genome. This particular arginine is responsible for the distinction between the human versus the P of DHFR. Those details can come only from the 3D structure of the macromolecules. And these are all many details. They are all in the published work. And then we went to the in vitro laboratory and then we found that whether the immediate pH is being utilized or not utilized. 
with the help of this particular test, by looking at the fluorescent spectroscopy, at 300 um, nanometers, at that particular wavelength, we have been able to see the NAD-based utilization and found that experimentally, the compound is synthesized after performing computer-aided drug design have uh, shown anti-malarial effect. The total number of compounds considered was about 23 compounds. Out of that, 16 compounds were showing anti-malarial effect. That is a big success. That is in vitro. Then we went into in vivo. In vivo testing was done on, uh, on mice models. And then initially, the malaria was injected to the mice. Uh, after four days of administering the drug, the malaria was, uh, the signals came out that malaria was getting treated. Uh, out of the 23 compounds that were submitted for the um, in the vivo testing, there are six compounds in the case of which the malaria was uh, positive signal was obtained and malaria was uh, uh, almost uh, removed. But the analysis was continued after 14 days from the first day of administering the uh, administering the malaria parasite and then uh, after administering the drug first time and then on D plus 14 observations were made, uh, six compounds, uh, in the case of six, uh, six compounds, the animals showed no malaria. But we continued the observations all the way up to 60 days. In the case of six, after 60 days, it became clear that uh, in the case of five compounds, malaria recurrence happened. In the case of one compound, malaria recurrence did not happen. That means at least one compound out of the 23 compounds turned out to be, um, uh, turned out to be, uh, what is it, curative. So if you can get one curative compound out of 23 compounds which are synthesized from the designed compound out of the total, uh, maybe 200 compounds were designed out of that 20, uh, 28 uh, were synthesized, two could not be synthesized uh, finally, but 26, uh, mean 26 were available out of that, uh, some of the, few of them were not soluble and those soluble compounds were submitted for testing and then we got the result that out of the 23 compounds, one compound came out to be active. That is a pretty good success after in vivo and in vitro study. Now similarly, I can list that um, similarly malaria, that lishmanial compounds are there with us, anti-diabetic compounds were also there. So this is one way, another study in which genes were looked at PD structures and accordingly we were able to design a few compounds and realize that EV isomerism is one of the possibilities in a drug molecule called gubernabend. Gubana Bench is an anti hypertensive compound which is being used in the market which is there which can be purchased very easily. But uh, we found with the help of the previous structure it can exist in E isomer as well as G isomer and then when we went into the laboratory we recrystallized the compound and we have found that this compound is indeed showing polymorphism. We could uh, not only identify by the easy isomerism which is obtained from the 3D structure, we are able to isolate the two different crystals of the same compound. One is in the E form, E isomer, the other is the Z isomer. They are found in the ratio 5 is to 95 in the reaction mixture and we could get the crystals and the crystals are shown here. This is form 1 and this is form 2 and we could we could show that one of them is easily available for the drug, drug formalism. Uh, for, formulation scientists can now utilize one, one, one particular polymorph compared to the other polymorph and that this entire story we could understand only after performing the 3D structural analysis.
I want to show that in, uh, in the case of the cytochrome versus the blood interaction, you can see that cytochrome uh, catalytic site is here. Inside this site, we can devise many the varieties of cytochromes because CIP2C19 is characterized by a dome region which is having basic residues, CIP2D6 is having acidic residues in the dome, and CIP3A4 is having uh, hydrophobic residues in the dome region. That means the dome green color or the orange color or the blue color are actually the small will be the differences in the uh, activities of these varieties of the cytochromes. How did we know that? Just by looking at the green structure. And then look at this particular property of omeprazole. Omeprazole is a prodrug. Prodrug is uh, showing activity. We know how it is showing activity. It undergoes smile three arrangement. What is smile three arrangement? How do you understand that? By looking at the 3D structure of omeprazole. This is the 3D structure of omeprazole. It is shown here that there is an imidazole ring and protonation happens at the site where the uh, it is an antacid, where there is H plus concentration is high, omeprazole will go there and it captures the proton and then proton goes to the imidazole ring immediately. The carbon center of the imidazole here, it gets undergoes conformation change. This lone pair of the nitrogen directly points out towards this carbon and it gives a stabilized arrangement and that arrangement is responsible for the smile free arrangement and that smile free arrangement is having several um, potential energy surface and that CD structures are there and these are the energy values and it, it can be shown that the S isomer is uh, having lower barrier that is 9.17 kilocalories whereas the E isomer, what is that? The R isomer is having 12.18. That is uh, the reason why uh, omeprazole S isomer is more efficacious than the omeprazole R isomer because we know the 3D structures of R isomer as well as the um, S isomer and thus we can provide the potential energy surfaces and, and thus we can give an explanation why a SMOprazole is a better drug, better, more efficacious drug compared to the corresponding R isomer. Similarly, on many compounds which have got hyazole ring, what is the balance, how the reaction happens, how the metabolism happens, and whether the, the gas oxidation happens or epoxidation happens, we can answer such questions and then we can compare and show that epoxidation is the most favorable reaction on the potential, on the potential surface of all the drugs containing thiazole ring. Then isomers of thiazole and we can show ah, there are several possibilities. Out of those possibilities, a few of them are very toxic. For example, isomer 10 and isomer 11 are very toxic because they have a the electrophilicity parameter which is more than 3. Any tautomer of the metabolite which has got uh, um, electrophilicity more than 3 are toxic and which has got less than 3 are not toxic. On that basis we can study um, drug toxicity studies. We can study drug metabolism, drug toxicity, drug delivery, drug polymorphism, drug um, formulation, Everything in pharmaceutical senses by looking at the three D structure of the molecule. That is why I am emphasizing think three D. Okay, so there are several other details. I don't want to give it. Uh, so, but even in three D structures are important in uh, artificial intelligence drug discovery, knowledge based methods, or genetic algorithms based methods, or physiologic based methods, artificial neural networks. Uh, deep neural network or convolutional neural network, whatever you think of in artificial intelligence, they all require 3D knowledge of the drugs and the this is from the 3D QSAR. 3D QSAR, there is, there is a 
a very good scientist called Smriti Khanna. She is working in Bombay. She found this particular beautiful diagram she prepared in the year 2005. And she showed that by looking at the 3D structure of Rosy Glutazone, she is able to turn and perform the QSAR. She is able to tell in which corner of the molecule PPR alpha activity can be improved, which corner of the molecule PPR gamma activity can be improved, and in which corner PPR alpha activity as well as gamma activity can be improved. This kind of innovative ideas can come only if you look at the 3D structure. Look at this molecule. This exactly two days ago. Two days ago I got a message that this compound amlodipine, which is a drug used for high blood pressure, is useful for anti-COVID research. Somebody said. Immediately what I did, I went to the um, internet and downloaded it, 2D structure. Then immediately, within one minute, I looked at the 3D structure. I know that there is a symmetric carbon center. Then now, within one minute, I know that this compound can exist in R isomer and S isomer, but this compound is supplied as a resonant mixture. And I know many, many properties immediately after looking at the 3D structure of the amlodipine. How? Because it is inquisitiveness. It is not only me, I want you all to do this. Whenever you come across with any name, tremendous weird name, we have seen today, first time, immediately go to the computer, look at the 3D structure. What is wrong? Internet is showing it. It will not take more than one minute. Think in 3D all the time. Okay? This is what is my message. And I would like to conclude the 3D structure of drugs and macromolecules are very important and it gives very high impact on our research. Thinking in 3D makes you a first grade drug discovery scientist. It is essential in CADD as well as in AIDD. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> so, so much informative and inspiring lecture. In, uh, PD. It's a good opportunity for me to share these ideas with youngsters. Well, it is. Uh, we are honored that we are. We, we got to hear you. <laughs> uh, you have any questions? Yeah, uh, sir, your voice is cutting. Uh, probably. Can it be uh, I don't know. Uh, are there any questions? There are no questions that I see in the chat box. There is no question. Uh, but uh, okay. still have written, uh, that uh, it's a nice session and uh, very informative, inspiring. This kind of thing people have written. <laughs> yeah, you, you may be going to uh, Dillon Patel, right? Your voice is giving me I'm not able to hear. I mean, uh, do you know Mr. Patel? And Smriti Kanna? Anyway, we can stop. Yes, Smriti, we are in touch, sir. Smriti, we are in touch. Uh, Dillon, uh, not sir. Dillon, uh, we are not in touch. We'll be find out, sir. The artist must be knowing him. Yeah, yeah. Dillon, Patel.